every day millions of us click I agree without a second thought but what if I told you that free might be the most expensive thing in the digital dictionary welcome to the hidden economy of free services today we're pulling back the curtain on what you're paying for when you're using your favorite apps and subscriptions to stick around because by the end of this video you'll see your digital life in a whole new light first off when something is free it's not because they're being nice it's because you're the product Every time you click share or swipe, you're giving away little pieces of information. And guess what? That information is like gold in the digital world. Companies take this info and sell it. They use it to show you ads or even sell it to other companies. It's like trading your secrets for a game or an app, but it's not just about information. There's also the cost of convenience. Ever notice how easy it is to spend money in these free apps? That's on purpose. From buying extra lives in a game to cool outfits for your avatar, these apps are designed to make you spend. It's like getting you hooked on candy then sending you the whole store. Now, let's talk about the mind game. These apps are made to be addictive. They play on your need for fun, friends, and feeling important. Every like, share, or new follower gives you a little rush, like getting a high five. But this rush is planned. It's like a game where the more you play, the more you want to play, even if you're not having fun anymore. But why do they do this? Because the more time you spend, the more data you give them. And remember, data is their gold. It's like they're building a treasure chest with all your little pieces of information. Let's look at some real life examples. Imagine you're playing a game and suddenly you see an ad for a toy you were just talking about with your friends. That's not magic, that's your data at work. Or think about when you see an ad for a new show right after you search for it. That's because apps and websites are always searching, learning what you like. Now let's talk about what this means for you. All this data collection isn't about just ads. It can affect what you see online, what news you get, and even what you think is important. It's like living in a bubble where everything is tailored just for you, but not always in a good way. And there's more. Sometimes this data isn't just used for ads. It can be sold to other companies, or worse, if there's a data breach, your personal info could end up anywhere. So what can you do? First, be aware. Now, know that when you click I agree, you're giving away more than just your time. Second, use privacy settings. Most apps let you control what info you share. Third, think before you click. If something's free, ask yourself, what am I really paying for? Let's talk about privacy. When you use apps or browse the web, you're leaving behind digital footprints. These footprints are like breadcrumbs that companies collect. They use this data to build profiles about you, which can be very detailed, knowing what you like, where you go, and even how you think. This isn't just about ads anymore. It's about predicting your behavior, which can affect everything from job opportunities to insurance rates. Now the Spam Act and similar regulations are meant to protect you from unwanted emails and texts. But here's a twist. Companies can legally sell your data to others who might then spam you. This happens because when you agree to the terms and services, you might be unknowingly allowing your data to be sold. And guess what? This data isn't just for ads. It's used for targeted scams, where scammers know exactly what to say to trick you. So so what are the dangers of this data selling? Identity theft. With enough data, someone could pretend to be you, opening accounts or even getting loans in your name. There's manipulation. Companies can influence your decision by showing you only what they want you to see, creating a bubble around you. There's discrimination. Your data might be used to deny you opportunities like jobs or loans based on predictions about your behavior or preferences. But what can you do? Here are some tips. Read before you click. Always read privacy policies. Look for what data they collect and how they use it. If it's too vague or allows selling data, think twice, use privacy tool. There are browser extensions and apps designed to block trackers. Tools like ad blockers or privacy focused browsers can help limit what you share. Be cautious about what information you give away. Do you really need to share your birthday for a simple game? Check your privacy settings on social media or apps. Dive into the settings. Opt out of data sharing where possible. Some platforms let you control who sees your information. Use strong, unique passwords and consider using a password manager. This reduces the risk of multiple accounts being compromised if one password leaks. Be wary of free services. If something's free, you're likely the product. Consider paying for services that promise not to sell your data. Stay informed. Laws like the CCPA in California or GDPR in Europe give you rights over your data. Know these rights. Exercise them. Think before you post. Once something's online, it's hard to take back. Think about the future implications of what you share. Educate yourself. Websites like the Electronic Frontier Foundation or Privacy International offer resources on digital privacy. Support legislation. Advocate for stronger privacy laws. The more people demand privacy, the more likely lawmakers are to act. 
Remember, your data is valuable. Just like you wouldn't leave your wallet laying around, don't leave your digital life unprotected. By being proactive, you can enjoy the digital world without feeling like you're constantly under watch. Stay safe, stay informed, and keep your privacy in check. Remember, your information is valuable. It's like your own personal treasure. Guard it. And when you're tempted by a free game or app, think about the hidden cost. Is it really worth it? Now, let's talk about some ways to enjoy apps without giving away too much info. Use apps that respect your privacy. Look for ones that don't track you or sell your data. It's like choosing friends who keep your secrets. And here's a fun fact. Some apps let you earn rewards by watching ads or doing tasks. It's like getting paid for your time instead of giving it away. But what about those apps you love that do track you? Try using them less. Set time limits. It's like having a curfew for your digital life. And always, always check the permission. If an app asks for too much, maybe it's time to find a new friend. Let's dive deeper into how these apps work. Imagine you're playing a game and suddenly asks you to invite friends. That's not just for fun, it's to get more users, more data, or think about how apps always seem to know where you are. That's because they're tracking your location, even when you're not using them. It's like having a shadow that follows you everywhere. Now, let's talk about the future, with more and more things becoming digital, like smartphones or cars. This data collection isn't going anywhere, it's growing. Imagine your fridge knowing what you like to eat and ordering it for you. That's cool, but it's also collecting data on what you eat, when, and how much. But there's good news too. More people are waking up to this. There are movements for digital rights, like the right to privacy. It's like fighting for your freedom in the digital world. Let's also talk about how you can protect yourself. One way is to use VPNs. It's like putting on an invisible cloak online. Your data becomes harder to track. Another way is to use ad blockers. They stop some of those sneaky ads from popping up and tracking you. And remember, not all apps are bad. Some are made by people who really want to help, not just make money off you. Look, look for apps that are open about what they do with your data. It's like choosing a friend who tells you everything up front. Now, let's get practical. How can you teach your friends about this? Start by sharing what you learn. Show them how to check app permissions. It's like being a superhero, teaching others how to protect themselves. And for parents, this is super important. Kids are growing up in this digital world. Teach them early about what's safe to share and what's not. In schools, they should teach digital literacy, not just reading and writing. It's like learning how to cross the street safely, but for the internet. Please consider what you're actually giving away. Every piece of information you share can be used in ways you might not expect, from your location data to your browsing habits. Companies build detailed profiles on you. This isn't just for ads, it's for predicting your behavior, influencing your decisions, and even selling your data to third parties. Now, why should you care? If you have enough data, companies can nudge you towards decisions you might not otherwise make. This could be buying products, supporting political views, or even affecting your mental health by creating echo chambers where you only see content that reinforces certain beliefs. Algorithms might decide your worth based on your data, not your merit. Today's free apps might seem harmless, but what about in 10 years? Laws change, data can be repurposed, and your past digital footprint might come back to haunt you. But let's talk about the flip side, the convenience. Free services offer accessibility. Not everybody can afford paid services. Free apps democratize access to technology, which is crucial for education, communication, and entertainment. Free platforms often drive innovation. They encourage developers to create without the immediate need for revenue, leading to new technologies and services. Social platforms connect us globally, which has value beyond measures in terms of culture exchange, support networks, and even activism. Free services come with hidden costs. They're not about giving you something for nothing. They're about taking something from you, your time, your attention, your data. So next time you see free, think twice. Is it really free or are you paying with something more valuable? Thanks for sticking around. If this video opened your eyes, please subscribe and let's start talking about the real cost of free. Remember, in the digital world, you're not just a user.